Hello everybody and welcome to your first sample question about the AIPP. So remember what we discussed in the previous video where we talked about really for a lot of you this is going to be a new program. Uh, you might not learn about it in your diploma. So when you take your diploma they might not cover this because it's so new. Well that's part of being an RCIC. Part of being an RCIC of course is keeping yourself updated and making sure that you have all the tools at your disposal so that you can help your clients. All right, so we're going to take a look at the AIPP, of course, in the context that it might appear on your upcoming ICCRC full skills exam. So this is your first one. You're going to have a couple, uh, you're going to have another one after this, and I hope you enjoy the question. All right, so here is your question. You can see a countdown timer there as well. So try to solve this question in these two minutes. Now for a lot of you, a lot of people usually say that they like to um, listen to this while they're driving or maybe doing housework or doing something else. That's perfect. I'll, I'll read this one to you as well. Okay, so we have Varun. Varun is from India and was very happy to hear that the Atlantic Immigration Pilot Project is looking for people like him who want to live and work in the maritime provinces. He had received an endorsed job offer to work as an engineer for fiber optics company in New Brunswick and meets all of the requirements in terms of his ECA verified degrees, work experience, and he obtained a score of CLB5 on his CELPIP exam. He explains that he is 29 years old and will be bringing his wife and three children to start a new life in Canada if immigration is an option. Is Varun an ideal candidate for immigration through the AIPP? And then we have our four options for answers. We have A, yes, but express entry is a better option for him because he can then live anywhere he wants to in Canada. We have B, yes, he meets the minimum requirements of the AIPP high skilled program. We have C, no, he does not meet the minimum requirements of any AIPP program. And D, no, but he qualifies as a New Brunswick business applicant. All right, so the two minutes is up. Uh, of course, when you take, if you're going to take the seminar with us, uh, we learn to really work through these questions a, a lot faster because two minutes, I think, is a lot of time for this. Now, hopefully you have your testy data book in front of you and hopefully it took you two minutes to get the answer to this question. Uh, let's take a look at the breakdown of the answer now. Okay, let's take a look at the first option here. So we have yes, but express entry is a better option for him because he can then live anywhere he wants to in Canada. Uh, now, we it's interesting because we just completed our CPD courses. So once you pass the ICCRC full skills exam and you become an RCIC, well, remember that you need 16 hours of CPD courses every year uh, in order to meet your ICCRC requirements. And also they're just, it's a really good way for you to really transition the academic knowledge that you're getting in this course and with your diploma program so that you can see it really in a practical con context uh, because you're going to work with tons of clients and of course you need that expert advice from people who have worked with quite a few clients and really are experts in these fields. Well, one thing that we just talked about actually uh, just a couple weeks ago was uh, express entry and how it is really a fantastic option for uh, your clients even if they're going to live in uh, the Atlantic provinces or Manitoba or Ontario or anywhere really. Uh, it's usually the first option you look at for your clients in real life. Now in the context of your exam we need to of course really take a look and see uh, if the person meets those requirements of express entry. So if he does meet the requirements of express entry. Well, it's fantastic because as the, uh, as the option tells you, he can live anywhere he wants to in Canada. So let's take a look. Now we have to take a look and really see if 
he meets those express entry requirements. All right, so very generally speaking, obviously there are quite a few requirements uh, in express entry, but remember that, of course, the person is uh, applying for permanent residency through express entry. Remember, express entry is not an immigration program. Express entry is a procedure for immigration. And the programs, of course, are the Federal Skilled Worker Program, the Canadian Experience Class, and the Federal Skilled Trades Program. Well, these are very generally the requirements for this. Now, with him, remember, he's an engineer. So that's pretty good. Um, of course, we saw that he doesn't really have any Canadian experience. Uh, they didn't mention anything about him working in Canada. So that would obviously cancel out the Canadian experience class. Uh, the reason we crossed off federal skilled trades is because, as I said, he's an engineer. And the last one we're left with really is the federal skilled worker program. So he certainly meets the requirements in education work experience, but with language. He scored a CELPIP score of five, and that equals a CLB five. But remember, with the Federal Skilled Worker Program, they need a CLB seven. All right, so with that, we know that A is certainly not an option. So that one is canceled. Uh, let's take a look at another option. So this is a pretty specific PMP we're talking about here, and uh, we're looking at New Brunswick. Now, remember, it's pretty impossible to remember every PMP. So what you want to do is use your test data booklet, of course, uh, to, to, to take a look, really, if this person qualifies for this program. Now, we will see once we dig into those details that actually he doesn't. Um, there are pretty specific requirements in this PMP, just like every PMP. And a lot of these have to do with business experience, business ownership, management experience, uh, submitting a business plan, and uh, that type of uh, those types of elements. So we don't really know any information about um, about this person and if he owns a business, his management experience, if he intends to do this type of work in New Brunswick as well. So with all that in mind, we would certainly take a look at D as not being the correct answer, especially when we compare it to some of the other answers uh, that we're gonna take a look at. All right, and now we're left with B and C. And essentially, if the answer is not one of those, well, it's pretty likely the other answer. So of course, let's start to dig into uh, one of these other options. All right, so let's take a look at C. Now, C says he does not meet the minimum requirements of any AIPP. Well, let's take a look. So just to review a bit, we know that there are three programs within the AIPP. So there's the International Graduate Program, the High Skilled Program, and the Intermediate Skilled Program. Just to do a little review, we'll go through each one again and correlate this person's information with those to see if he actually qualifies for one of these. Now, if he qualifies for one of these, that's going to help us, of course, to really analyze B as well. All right, so the International Graduate Program. Well, remember those requirements. Now, I think this one's pretty obvious, really. Uh, there's no mention of this person uh, having graduated from a program in any of the Atlantic provinces or spending time even in the Atlantic provinces. So I think we can pretty easily cross off the International Graduate Program and understand very clearly that he does not qualify for that. All right, so we know very certainly that he does not meet those requirements of the uh, Graduate Program under the AIPP. Now we're left with two other options, the High Skilled Program versus the Intermediate Skilled Program. All right, so with this one, the big difference really between these is the work experience. So we know that he's an engineer. Uh, we saw all of his experience, his degrees, etc., And we know that an engineer is obviously not NOC C. So an engineer would be under NOC A. So with this, we can eliminate the uh, intermediate skilled 
program and we know that he does not meet those requirements. Well, we have to continue to dig in and really see if he meets those requirements of the high skill program. So the way to dig into that really is to take a look at the remaining information given to us. And that is, of course, his language ability. I remember we talked about the language score needed to qualify under the AIPP, and it's only a CLB four. Now he has a CLB five, so obviously he exceeds that language requirement. All right, so now we need to continue on and take a look at the job offer requirements for him. So the AIPP, the job offer element, covers about half, really, of the AIPP knowledge that you need to have in order to be able to answer these correctly on your upcoming exam. Now remember, he received an endorsed job offer. So that means that the company is designated for sure. And of course, uh, the job offer uh, is, well, would have to be NOC OAB. Um, of course it is, because he's gonna be an engineer full-time one year. Uh, we don't really know, but we can assume uh, in that one. And of course, that final point, which would be him having to prove that he meets the education, training, etc., cetera, uh, in the NOC, which of course his uh, degrees and all that are ECA verified. So we can really assume that, of course, he meets these requirements clearly. Now, if you answered B right from the start in those two minutes, well, congratulations. Uh, you're really off to a good start in making sure that you pass your ICCRC full skills exam. Uh, if you didn't answer B or maybe it took you longer, well, that's perfectly fine. Uh, right now, when you're working through these videos, you should be... Uh, probably two months away from your exam. You've got a lot of time to practice, of course, and if you're going to take the seminar and purchase the materials, well, you're going to get faster and faster and faster in answering these questions and, of course, more and more and more accurate. As always, a very big thank you for your time, for your work, for your effort. And of course, for taking those extra steps towards making sure that you pass your ICCRC full skills exam.